Hello YouTube and welcome to another Aruba Networks tutorial So in this uh, video we're gonna talk about VRF which stands for Virtual Routing and Forwarding So are you ready? Let's get started So as you may know VRF is a technology that allows multiple instances of routing table to uh, coexist within the same router okay and because of the routing instances are independent the same or overlapping IP addresses can be used without conflicting with each other okay so actually uh, VRF is used to segment the router resources it's to create like a virtual router inside a single router okay and you can think of it uh, like uh, VRF do for routing what VLANs do for switching okay so this is our topology here we have single router Aruba router here and we have three actually uh, PCs so first of all I have configured IP addresses of this uh, PCs so each PC has its own subnet and of course I have configured also the interfaces for this Aruba layer 3 switch as the gateway of each PC okay so for example here for the PC1 which has an IP address that 10 that 251 that 20 that 1 I configured the IP addresses or actually the gateway as that 20 that 20 so let me move on to our actually uh, Aruba switch layer 3 switch to show you the IP address configuration okay so you can see clearly what's going on on this router here so if I do show IP interface brief you will see all the gateway that I have configured for each subnet here so you can see for example for 111 I configured 20.20 as a gateway for 30.1 I configured 30.30 okay and finally for 40.1 I configured as its gateway 40.40 okay so normally as we have here a router and all the subnet are directly connected to this router each PC here from this uh, topology can ping each other so for example let me move on to PC1 and ping PC2 to see if I have a response so that 30.1 and indeed you can see that I have successfully pinged PC2 I can do also the same for PC3 but here the subnet is 40.1 and we can ping it okay so now we'll talk about VRF so as I told you VRF is used to segment the router resources so first of all let me show you the default what we call the default VRF that comes by default with the router so if I go here to my Aruba layer 3 switch and if I do show VRF you can see that all the interfaces by default are on the default VRF okay so here you can see all the interfaces are in the default VRF okay which name is default actually there is also another VRF which is the management VRF so if I do here show run to see the whole configuration you can see here that I have configured VRF called management so it's used to manage actually the router here Aruba switch layer 3 okay and it has name MGMT for management and it's associated with the management port okay so all you have to bear in mind that you have by default two VRF that comes by default with Aruba layer 3 switches we have the default one which all the interfaces belong to it and we have actually the management VRF which only the management port 
is attached to this VRF okay and also another thing that you can do in order to see what's going on for the routing table is to execute the command show IP route so this, this command will show you actually that uh, all the route here I by default in the default VRF okay so here you can see we have default of uh, total of uh, six route and they belong all to VRF default okay so now we're gonna actually segment this topology into two VRF we will create one VRF called VRF red and one VRF blue so when we will do that only the PCs on the same VRF will ping each other for example here the two PCs that are on VRF red can ping each other can access each other but they cannot access VRF blue okay so let's do that so in order to create a VRF it's pretty simple we go here on our layer 3 switch to the config mode then we enter here the command VRF okay then we specify the name that we want to give to this VRF so as I told you here we'll create one called just red for example okay so now that VRF red is created we have to attach to it the interfaces so here as you can see in this topology we'll be attaching to VRF red interface 111 and 112 okay so let's do that so we'll go into each interface for example the first one 111 and we execute the command VRF attached then the VRF name so in this case it's red okay here we go we'll do the same for the interface 112 so I will go to interface 112 112 and I will attach to it the VRF red okay so it's simple as that okay so now let's create the VRF blue and attach to it this interface 113 so I will exit here I will execute the command VRF this time blue and I will go to the interface 111 or actually 113 then we have to execute the command VRF attached and blue okay so we are finishing configuring our VRF but here I will show you one very important thing here okay so if I exit and if I do show IP interface brief you will notice that we don't have any more IP addresses so this is a very important thing to keep in mind whenever you execute this command VRF attached blue the IP addresses are gone so you have once again to configure them because you remember before each interface has an IP address as the gateway for the PCs but when you execute the command VRF attached the IP address actually has gone so we have to configure it so let's do that so I will go to config mode to my interface for example 111 and I will give the IP address which is by default the gateway for HPC slash 24 okay I will do the same for interface uh, 112 but this time it will have as address 30 actually that 30 here I made a mistake 30 that 30 for interface 2 and for interface 1 actually I did a mistake it's 20 that 20 okay because it's the getaway for my first PC and finally I will go to 113 
and I will configure the IP address as 40.40. .40. So it's always good to verify show IP interface brief. So here the IP addresses will not actually show up because they are in different VRF. Okay. So if you want to see the IP address for all the VRF, you have to execute this command show IP interface brief. show IP interface brief then all VRF so here you can see that for interface blue which is the last one I have this IP addresses and for interface red we have configured also these two IP addresses okay so everything looks good so now we have segmented our topology into two actually it's like we have two routers actually in this topology okay we can also see that in our routing table table if you want to show the writing table show ip route so by default it will show nothing because i have nothing on the default vrf because all the root here belong to even to VRF red or VRF blue so in order to see the root for specific VRF you execute the command show IP route then VRF for example red here we go so you can see here the roots for VRF red so we have actually these two subnets here that 20 and that 30 if you want to to see the roots for VRF blue, we'll just replace the name for blue, and we have only two roots actually for the segment 40.40. .40, okay. And finally, if you want to see all the roots, including the default and the one that we have created, we have the command show IP route all VRF. Here we go, it will show us everything, all the VRF that we have and the route that exists within them, okay? And now let's verify that actually only PC1 and PC2 can communicate. So let's ping PC1 or actually PC2 from PC1. So as you can see, we have connectivity to PC2 because they are on the same VRF. But if I want to ping that 40, the ping will fail. So here you can see it pings only its default getaway, which is 20.20. But for reaching this PC3, the destination network is unreachable. Okay. So we have segmented our router into actually different segments. Okay. So always keep in mind that VRF do for routing what VLANs do for switching. This is the summary of this actually video. Okay. So that was just a brief video to show you the advantages of using actually VRF in uh, actually uh, Aruba networks, switches or routers. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.